What is going on, friends? Welcome on back to the Let's Play world. Well, I guess this is a recap of the last 100 days. 123 days to be specific. For those of you guys who are just joining, I've been playing lots of hardcore Minecraft recently, and I kept dying. So instead of continuing on another hardcore world, I decided to start a brand new Let's Play world. And this one, well, it, it isn't hardcore. So I decided to take the last four episodes and throw them all together in a mashup to give us one long episode. Anyways, enough talking, so let's jump right on into this. Oh yeah, and for those of you guys who do watch me and you've been wondering where I've been, I went on vacation for a week and then when I got back, I got really sick if you can't tell by my voice. I'm finally starting to feel good enough to get back into it and keep recording, but for a while there, I couldn't really talk great. And I'm not gonna make you guys go through me having a raspy voice. Anyways, yeah, let's get to it. I have been playing lots of hardcore Minecraft recently. And don't get me wrong, I really love it. But the stress that comes with playing on a world that can just like delete itself and be gone forever makes it so you can't play Minecraft to its full ability. So today we started a brand new let's play world and obviously this one isn't hardcore the spawn is looking pretty cool up on these mounds oh and there's a village right there i also noticed that there's a shipwreck right there too so we're definitely gonna have to check that out don't mind if i steal a bed maybe two just in case i lose one of them is there any chest around new no. oh hello there fine sir i'd love to trade you but i have nothing to give you oh and hello to you would you be mad if i hit you I think he would be. Oh, finally, we have a chest with some apples and potatoes and also some crops that I am definitely going to harvest up. Sorry. Along with this tree, because every Minecraft world starts with harvesting some logs. We got some iron and coal right there. So I'm quickly going to make myself one crafting table. Uh, give me that back so I can then make a wooden pickaxe and then collect up a little bit of stone so I can graduate from the wooden pickaxe. I will be keeping this though so we can put it in some sort of item frame in the future just to remember this first day. Is that a creeper? Oh, that, that is a creeper. I also hear a skeleton, which I don't like. I'm just going to kind of sneak my way over to this grab it all. I'd love to get that coal, but I really don't want to have to deal with that creeper. You know, while I'm at it, I'm just going to make myself a stone sword to be safe. Well, I think I've pretty much looted that entire village, so now I want to move on and go check out this shipwreck. I always hate when these things are flipped over because it makes it so much harder to go through. Can I swim into there? Is that is that possible? I just go like that, and now I'm inside. Okay, there's the chest. Okay, we got some raw iron. Awesome. Well, I guess it's not raw. I guess it's cooked. Grab all of these goodies, and can I get out of here? No, I just gotta break this. Now, obviously, there's usually two or three chests in these things, but as you can tell, it's mostly destroyed. Oh, what's down here? Anything down here? Nope, I don't think so. And I really don't want to take a really long time digging around. I will grab that sugar cane after I say hello to these these turtles that are I, I don't know what you're doing don't don't look at me and the sun is beginning to go down on day zero so let's sleep through this night you know I keep forgetting that this isn't hardcore and I can be a little more aggressive when it comes to playing like doing stuff like this I feel so brave I always love coming across these stone beaches at the beginning of a world, mainly because they're full of lots of iron and also coal. I mean, just from this one area, I was able to collect 51 coal, and I didn't even really explore that side. Looks like we got a mountain right there and over there. Easily the best update in Minecraft, in my opinion. Oh, and look at that, there's a cherry blossom biome right there. A and another village. I'm gonna go check out that village real quick. Looks like this village has a blacksmith, which is awesome. Hopefully it's got some goodies. Ooh, two diamonds and some iron armor. I will definitely take that. Also gonna steal these furnaces just to make it a little bit easier to cook up all of my meat. How is the day already over? It seemed like it went by so quick. Well, I'm gonna sleep through it. And also this seems like too perfect of an area to launch a boat from. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. And since this is Minecraft 1.20, I can now make a boat with a chest. And look how cool that thing is. All right, let me grab my crafting table and load all my goodies in here. And now I can get on my way. If you wanna see more content like this, don't forget to like and subscribe. Guys, it makes a huge difference for a small channel like mine. Let's get back to it though. Definitely want to stay away from that monument that will kill me instantly, but it is good to know that there's one right here. Looks like we have a taiga right there. Oh, is that a large taiga or one of like the 12 names it has? All right, that does mean I need to empty this boat back out because I don't want to leave any of this stuff behind. And then can I break the boat real quick? Ah, perfect. Oh, that's nice. It stays as a boat chest. Yep, it is a large spruce forest. Oh man, I'm so excited. These are literally my favorite biomes. And there's some rivers running through it. 
good. Oh yeah, this is gonna be awesome. I'm gonna stick to the left because I do wanna build by like a small river. And so far this is pretty promising. And there's also a dark oak forest. Oh look, there's an azalea tree, which means there's some lush caves like right below us. You know, this might be the area that I end up building in. It's almost too perfect. We have a large spruce forest and then we have a dark oak right there. And then right around that corner was a birch forest, meaning we have three different types of wood all right next door to us. Oh yeah, and obviously the river that I like. All right, well, I've been running around for quite a while exploring this large taiga, and I think I found the perfect building location. It's sort of a little isthmus in between a river and a big lake. And for those of you guys who don't know what an isthmus is, it's a thin piece of land in between two bodies of water. Oh, hey, look, you learned something today. Bet you didn't think it was coming from a Minecraft YouTuber. But yeah, there's this smaller river right here, which isn't super small, but it's not huge compared to the other one. And then over here is more of a lake-like structure with plenty of flat ground to build a starting house on. With the building location now figured out, I wanna use a few pieces of iron to make an iron ax so I can then chop down some of these trees because right now it's kind of hard to visualize where my house is gonna go. I need to make myself a chest real quick because my inventory is full and I really don't want any of these logs to disappear. And while I'm at it, I'm actually gonna put a furnace down real quick so I can cook up some of this raw mud because I really don't wanna waste any of my carrots or potatoes since I'm gonna need those for building farms. Now, normally I'm the type of Minecraft player that likes to build a starter house before doing anything else. Instead, since this isn't hardcore, I think I'm actually gonna jump down into the caves and see if we can get any goodies. But first I wanna wait for this mutton to finish cooking and I also wanna cook up this six raw iron so I can make some iron tools. Well, besides an axe, because I already have one. And you know, since I'm able to, I'm also gonna place down some carrots and potatoes. I never remember, can you turn pods onto farmland? No, no you can't. Why is that a thing? That's the only thing that sucks about building in this biome. Like half of the ground is pods all. At least you can do it with coarse dirt. With all the crops placed in and my iron finished up, I'm just gonna craft myself two iron pickaxes for the time being. And I'm also gonna make myself a shield because I'd rather be safe than sorry, even though I can just die and spawn right back at this bed. I would probably lose all my goodies though. Oh, look at the chicken over there. If you can't tell, I have ADHD. Now, considering that there's an azalea tree right over there, I'm gonna assume most of the stuff below us is lush caves, which is really, really cool. Although it's not very much fun when you're trying to look for resources. So I'll give it a little try at first but if it's not working out, I'm gonna have to venture over to a different biome. Is this a cave right here? It seems to be. Oh my God, there's a spawner right there too. Oh, okay, I wanna block that off. Is that, oh, is that a spider spawner? Just blow up, blow up, blow up, blow up, blow up. Let me, let me block that off. Okay, I think I got him in there. I think they're good. Okay, there's another, oh, 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 oh. Oh, if I get a CD, that would be kind of cool. Yeah, whatever, I'm just gonna let him explode. Place a piece of dirt right there. And now let's go get the skeleton. Well, it turns into a water cave, but at least we got a spawner right here. And there is a chest. Yes, let me just try placing some torches in there. All right, I got all the spiders killed and this place lit up. Okay, that, that chest isn't very good. Is this one any better? Not really. I'm just gonna leave some of this stuff behind for now because I will come back here, obviously, to build an XP farm, but I don't want to clutter my inventory for now. You know, come to think of it, I did forget to bring a bed, which isn't the worst thing in the world, but it would be nice to have one just in case I come up from the caves and it's nighttime. Bed acquired, and now it's time to look for a new cave. I was able to find a few caves pretty quickly, but most of them seemed to be surface caves. And then I stumbled upon a pretty big one, but it was full of mobs, so I had to take all those guys out. And man, Endermen do a lot of damage, don't they? I have myself a pair of shears here, and I think you can harvest a spore. Oh yeah, you can, awesome. I've never harvested one before, but I do like using them just because it adds a little bit more detail to your builds, especially if they're supposed to look like lush or in a swamp maybe. You know, this is the reason I don't like lush caves. There's this huge cave that I just totally lit up and you'd think there'd be a bunch of resources in here. Well, no, that's not the case. I got about a stack of coal and two raw iron. There is some very cute axolotls though. Look at this little guy, look at him, look at you. I'm just gonna continue to mine though. Well, I've decided to leave this cave because I'm just over lush caves right now. Everything's either a dead end or it just turns into clay and a bunch of green stuff. Ooh, look, there's a fox right there. There does seem to be a pretty big cave entrance over there 
there on that hill. So I think I'm gonna go check that out. Hopefully it's a little more promising than what we've already seen. I have nothing to trade with you, kind sir, but I am interested in what you're selling. Ooh, I like the slime balls and the acacia saplings, but everything else is pretty much trash and I want your lead, so I'm gonna kill you. No, don't spit at me and it's nasty. Oh, my sword broke. Oh my God, and my ax broke. Okay, I have like no good way to fight these guys. Did I get the lead? I got one lead. Where's the second lead? Okay, one's good enough for now. They're spitting at me. Well, this looks pretty promising and I think it is high enough up for the iron to start spawning. Hopefully there's no mobs though because I really don't have a way to fight them. Oh, that, oh, oh, there's a skeleton and a creeper and two more creepers. Oh no, I probably should have made a sword before coming in here, which is exactly what I'm gonna do real quick. I'll, I'll just leave that there for now. I think I got most of the mobs. Nope, that did definitely not, not what I was gonna say. I was gonna say I think I have the mobs taken care of, but obviously I don't. Shields might be one of the best things in Minecraft right now. I know you used to be able to block with your sword, but I feel like shields do it even better. Because if I recall correctly, you would still take damage when you're blocking, just not nearly as much if you weren't. And of course, more lush cave. This one does seem to be pretty big though. But yeah, look at that. It's actually a relatively large cave. Don't mind, oh, oh, I, I wanted to harvest you guys, but I guess not. All right, you guys are gonna have to hear me out right now, but I think I'm gonna pivot the original plans. Now at first I wanted to build down by a river or a lake in the spruce forest, something like that. But after lighting this cave up, it kind of makes me want to build a cave house. That does mean I need to go grab my stuff though. So first off, I need to make my chest. One chest please. I do not want to throw my shears out. I'll throw the dirt out and I'll just put it here for now and empty all this out. Oh my goodness I got so much coal. Almost five stacks and I didn't even harvest all of it in here. All right with my inventory empty I'm gonna head down and grab the rest of my items. I'm just gonna leave some of this stuff down here for now because it doesn't really matter but I do want to grab my potatoes and carrots because I don't want to leave these behind. I am really excited to actually build this cave base. I haven't built in the cave in the longest time and I used to really enjoy doing it too. Now I just got to put Put all this stuff away and also set my spawn so in case I die I will spawn right back in this location with all of my stuff. I'm happy that we found this big cave but it didn't have as much iron as I originally thought it would meaning I still need to continue mining. So I decided to gather some stuff up and head out and look for a new cave. Hopefully this new cave is in a lush cave. That looks promising but there's a good chance everything in there is just gonna be a water cave. And this doesn't look promising but it's worth checking out. So far no lushness but there is is a creeper and more lush. Now that is how you take care of mobs. Oh, this is always the worst when you have to drop down into a cave that you can't really see into. All right, I'm just gonna go for it, get my sword out. Uh, I'm not seeing much. Okay, we're good. Of course, it is a lush cave, but it does seem to be pretty big and promising. Um, excuse me. I'm gonna start with lighting this whole thing up so we don't get sneak attacked by any mobs or creepers. I think there's a tropical fish massacre going on. For some reason, this zombie villager just scared me so much. Besides that though, this cave is quite promising actually. I really like the look of that besides all the mobs that are in there. Oh, is that, is that what I think it is? That's a geode, yeah. Well, before I head down there, I'm gonna kind of clear this place out and build up the confidence. As I made my way into the non-lush cave, I had to take out a ton of mobs. So I decided to sweep going back and forth, placing torches down, slowly lighting it up, and obviously killing the mobs along the way. Okay, there is diamonds right there, but there's also two creepers. Come on, blow up, and then you blow up. Oh, I don't like how close that was. That is scary, but the shields do work. Okay, yeah, we got two diamonds for sure right there. Is that more right there? I think there's more right down there. Yep, definitely there is. Gotta take care of all these mobs. Are you guys seeing what I'm seeing? I'm almost like 99% sure this is an iron vein right here, considering there's tough and also full iron blocks mixed in with it. All right, I'm definitely gonna have to come back for that, but first I need to make a new pickaxe so I can harvest the diamonds. One iron pickaxe, please. And you know, I'm also gonna make a chest real quick just so I can clear out my inventory a little bit. Because right 
right now there is way too much stuff. All right, let's check how many diamonds we got. There's one, there's two. Is there three or four? There is definitely three, obviously. Let me dig around a little bit. No more diamonds, but a little bit of gold to uncover. And then let's go check this pack down here. Well, I think that was just a two pack. So we have five with us right now. And there's two more back up at base. There is 100% an iron vein in here because there's more full blocks of raw iron right there. And I think each one of these gives you nine, right? Does it give you nine? Yeah, it does. I think we just hit the jackpot. Using three of my five diamonds, I decided to craft myself up one diamond pickaxe. This would make it a little bit quicker and easier to dig out this iron vein. One, because diamond pickaxes have way more durability than iron, and also they mine just a little bit quicker. It is pretty cool seeing me dig from a third person point of view because it looks like I'm building my own cave. It's definitely tough though because these things wind and weep all over the place. I'm going up and down to the side and also watching out for some lava. Well, that's a nice little find, isn't it? I think there's three. Is there going to be a fourth? Can there be a fourth, please? Let me dig around a little bit. No, I don't think there's a fourth, but I did just get the diamonds back from crafting this. And I have a, uh, a, a lot of iron. Let's just put it that way. I'm almost up to six stacks. We got some more diamonds right here. Please don't just be one. That's that's always the worst. I think it is just one. Darn. Okay. Well, it, at least I got one. Anything good down there? Can't really tell from up here, but I'm not going to go down there because I have an inventory full of items and I really don't have any more room. So I'm going to make sure to write down the coordinates of this area right here so I can always come back for more iron. I can pretty much leave all of this stuff in this chest because it doesn't really need to come back up to base. Actually, if I'm smart, I can craft all of my iron ore into raw iron blocks. Can you do the same with lapis? Is, is that a thing? Can, oh yeah, yeah. Why did I think you couldn't do that? And I still do want to stop by that geode to maybe get some amethyst shards, which is just right here. I'm just going to dig a staircase down into here. I want to make sure I don't break any of the ones that grow the shards. Is there anything in here? No, no mobs. Am I safe? Am I safe? Part of the reason I cleared this out is so I can grab some of this calcite because I really love to build with it. And I did make sure I didn't break any of these. I got just about two stacks of calcite, which should be plenty enough. I just need to get back up here. And now I can start the journey back up to the surface. And I think I remember how to get up there. No, it wasn't that way. I'm gonna put a torch right there because it's a little dark. Was it over here? I remember I fell through the ceiling. Okay, I think I'm in the right direction. Yep, it's right about here. It's right over here. And then from from this point, it should be pretty easy. And then if I run up to the top through here, it should be the surface. Oh yeah, definitely. Here's all the dirt. Please be daytime. Please be, nope, definitely not daytime. Definitely not daytime. I'm just gonna sleep through the night real quick. Is this the entrance into our cave? No, it's definitely not. And we're back home. I just gotta get my inventory all cleared out. Well, it's now been a little while and I've got all of our goodies smelted up. And also I'm now up to level 30, but I can't really do anything about it. As much as I do wanna go out and try getting myself an enchantment table, I think it would be smart to build a starter house first. But before I can do that, I'm gonna need to go collect up some materials. Starting with the easiest one first, I made my way down the mountain and harvested up a few of these tall spruce trees. And it's amazing, I cut down five of these and got six stacks of wood. Another reason this is one of my favorite biomes. And also, of course, I placed the saplings back down. I don't want to deplete my entire forest. Next up, I'm gonna need a little bit of sand. Oh my goodness, that could have been bad. But I do keep forgetting that this isn't hardcore Minecraft. I think it's gonna take me a little while to get used to that. Oh, I do need your bones, please. I don't have my shield out. Uh, I got a bow, but no bones. I also wanted to collect up a little bit of coarse dirt so I can build some pathways within our cave. Luckily, this stuff is pretty much everywhere. And that, please, you'll find out what I'm using it for later. I'm also gonna need a little bit of stone and I think I'm gonna clear it out from right here because I can make a cool little lookout point if we dig through this. Yeah, it would be perfect for a little balcony that looks out over this beautiful piece of land. I've never made one of these before because I've always had zoom, but I'm excited to try this thing out. Oh, the animation is so cool. I'm gonna kind of hate myself for this, but it needs to be done. Did that, no, oh, there it goes, there it goes. Oh, get me out of the way. Oh, why was it so much gravel? I pretty much have everything together that I'm gonna need to build this starter house. So I think it's about time we get to building it. I first wanna start with building the front facade and I have a pretty good idea of what I want it to look like. Wait a second, I'm using the wrong blocks. When it comes to building this starter house, I mainly wanna 
stick with spruce because I feel like it fits the cave really well. Caves are naturally a dark area and spruce logs really give off that same darkness. Although I am stripping them all down because the natural spruce is a little much for me. I also decided to bring in some campfires as a little eve. So far, I think that is a pretty good start. I really wanted to incorporate a big circular window in this build, which I've obviously done. Making my way up on the build, I knew I wanted to use deep slate for the roof. Since you can give deep slate so many different textures, I usually like to pick two and alternate on the roof a little bit. It gives your build a little bit more texture and a little easier on the eye. Although it's definitely tough building a roof in a cave when you have blocks right above you. I do like how that is looking besides the stone sticking out right there. Okay, I think that is looking better. It's not as natural, but yeah, I gotta fix that too. Yeah, that is looking much better. I think once we do a little bit more detailing too, it will kind of hide the ugliness. Moving on to the next step in this build, which is honestly the hardest part in my opinion. With the main structure complete, it's now time to come through and do most of the detailing, specifically on the exterior for now. When I look forward to the future, I know I want this cave to have kind of a mystical lush look, which is funny because I hate exploring lush caves, but I've never tried to build one before and I think it would be a great challenge for me. When I think of lush and mystic, there's a few blocks that come to mind. First off, any lush cave needs a little bit of moss, and I obviously used way too much, but it still looks pretty good. And I also made sure to carve a pathway going through the moss using some coarse dirt. Now, right in front of the house, there's these two pillars that are holding up the ceiling above. In one of them, I have a pretty cool idea. I want to replace all the stone with either purple glass or amethyst, giving it this kind of bright purple mystic look. And that lava I got earlier, well, that's underneath it, shining a little bit of light through it so it looks like it's glowing. Now, for the other pillar, I wasn't quite Quite sure what to do so I decided to bring in some moss and calcite and give it a little bit more detail. I'm not totally sure if I want to keep it but it is something a little different and adds some more color to this build. I am definitely liking how this is turning out. The more I look at this pillar right here the one I was kind of questioning the more I'm starting to like it. I think maybe it needs just a little bit more detail work up at the top and also a little bit more vines. For the crystal one I absolutely love it. Like I don't think I could like it any more than I already do. Besides that though I haven't done much on the interior of the house nor have I done anything over on this artificial cave, which will eventually be a lookout. First things first, I think I should clear out a few blocks in here to give myself a little bit more space. But before I can do that, I need to get one more chest set up so I can clear out my inventory because currently it's a mess. I also am going to need a new diamond pickaxe soon because right now this one does not have much durability left. And there it went. Sad times. Right now, this house is going to be pretty small on the inside, so I need to do some planning and make sure I have everything set up in the right spot. Right over here, I think I can fit in a few double chests. A little bit something like that, and then if I take some furnaces, get rid of this gravel and these two pieces of stone, put some more furnaces down on the floor, I can give myself a little kitchen. And I think I know the perfect block to put there just to add a little bit more detail. Although I haven't crafted one just quite yet before. And you know, it kind of has a weird recipe. If you haven't guessed by now, I'm going to craft myself one hanging sign. Well, you get six from that. That's pretty good. And I wish I grabbed some glow squidding from down below in the caves. But of course I didn't, but I can put the hanging sign right there and we can edit it. So we'll fill it out a little bit later. And actually, you know, I think I want to put it sideways like that. Definitely liking how that's looking. Well, in my typical fashion, I got a little carried away on the interior. And when I mean a little, it's pretty much complete. Right when we walk in, we got the bedroom. We got this cool little bench that I have no idea what to do with. We obviously have our furnaces, our chest. And then right over here is my workstation. It has all the workstations I'm going to need, at least for now. But this is a starter house, so it doesn't need to have everything. Hence why the storage room is so small. More like a storage shed? Storage closet. Besides that though, I think this is a perfect stopping point for today's episode. We got a bunch of stuff done and I am so excited to be playing on this new world that isn't hardcore. I mean, just check this out. Look how cool this place is looking. It's my first time building a cave base and I love it so much already. Although, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button and I will see you guys in the next one. What is going on friends? Welcome on back to the brand new Let's Play world. Last episode, we built up this perfect little starter house behind me along with doing tons of mining so we got a ton of really really good resources but today i want to do a little bit of base expanding and there's a few things that i can name that we are definitely going to need but first off as you guys can tell i am currently level 31 which means i can do a max level enchantment too bad i don't have an enchantment set up yet so first things first i want to come down to the river and place in a bunch of sugarcane 
So then I can let all this stuff grow in so I can craft some books and also some bookshelves. Next up, I'm gonna need some cows. There was just an Enderman right there and I wanna kill him so bad. Oh, he just teleported again. Where did this guy go? All right, well, never mind. We got work to do. Quickly grabbing a whole bunch of hay bales and then crafting some fence posts so I can make a simple little cow pen. I set out on an adventure to find cows. So hopefully we can find a pretty large plains that is full of them. What are these guys doing in the water? They're just like, dang. Oh, do they hunt fish? There, there's no way that's a thing. No way the foxes hunt fish. Is that what they're doing? No, uh, no. Almost got my hopes up there. You guys will never guess what I just found. It doesn't look like much, but I'm pretty sure this right here is a trail ruins, which I have never explored any of these before, but yeah. Oh yeah, definitely a trail ruins. Definitely got to take a screenshot of these coordinates right here so I can come back for that thing. Also looks like we have a sunken ship right here that I am definitely going to check out. Ooh, and this one's Looks like it's mostly intact. I can easily reach this chest. Tons of iron along with emeralds. And then the other chest should be all the way up in the front. I want to say right below here. Okay, there it is. We got some Frostwalker leather boots. That's pretty cool. And I'm just going to leave the rest of this stuff. Where's the third chest normally? Is it down below? Oh yeah, it's right there. And this is where the treasure map is. And let's see where this buried treasure is. X marks the spot. So let's do a little digging. Hopefully we get some goodies. Yeah. Yep, there it is. Okay, a ton of iron, some TNT, which I will always take, some cooked salmon, a little bit of gold, and a heart of a sea. I'm just gonna leave the prismer and crystal and break this thing, because if you guys didn't know, if you don't break the chest, it might show up on another treasure map. We got another sunken ship right there, which I am definitely gonna check out. Hopefully this one also has a treasure map in it. Oh, some smithing templates. Oh, that's awesome. I gotta get back up for some air. I think that's gonna be the only chest, though, because this the whole front half is destroyed on this thing. Oh my goodness, there's another one right Right there and also another one way in the distance after making my way over to this sunken ship it took me a little while of almost drowning to finally get to the chest i was able to reach the one on the very front of it which didn't have much good items in it and then the one in the captain's quarters had a few more armor trims and of course this one is pretty much completely buried although conveniently enough there's a chest right there which i am definitely gonna go loot oh we got another treasure map i've also been grabbing all the sugar can i pass on the way just because it means less time waiting for this stuff to grow After getting my second treasure map, I definitely wanted to go check out this thing. Luckily, it was very close by. And once I dug down a little bit and found the chest, oh my, did this thing have some goodies in it. It had two diamonds, tons of iron, a little bit of gold, and some more cooked salmon. Oh no, it looks like a bee got stuck in my boat. All right, well, I guess this guy's now coming with me. Well, I decided to explore another sunken ship, and obviously I got another treasure map. X marks the spot, so let's go digging for this one also. Oh my goodness, finally I uncovered this and it was only one block below the sand. Ooh, we got two more diamonds, a ton of iron, more gold, TNT, and some emeralds. And obviously, gotta break the chest. Look how much excavating I did just to find the chest right there. Oh yeah, and there's also a bamboo forest right here. Definitely gonna grab some melons because I don't think I have any yet, along with grabbing some bamboo. Is that what I think it is? Yes, it is a mangrove swamp. That is awesome. Even though it's like 3,000 blocks away from home, at least I now know where one is. After a little bit more searching, I stumbled across a savanna, which is almost comparable to a plains when it comes to animals. But then in the distance, I saw a plane. So I made my way over there and now it's time to look for some cows. Finally, I have stumbled across these guys. Now I'm just going to use the fence post that I made to make myself a little pen. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why didn't I just look for some cows by the house and build a little pen over there and do all the work next to base? Well, I thought this was a good excuse to head out and do a little bit more exploring. And I'm glad we did because we found loads of diamonds and also loads of iron. And now I know where a mangrove swamp is too. Well, I got a few cows in the pen and I bred some of them up. So now it's just a waiting game until I have enough cows to get enough leather to build an enchantment setup. This is going to take a while, but it will make for a very satisfying time lapse and also killing montage. As I waited for the cow's cooldown period, I decided it would probably be a smart idea to build myself a little hut. This could be used in case I need to do any AFKing. As the sun set, I decided to kill some spiders to make a fishing rod, because in my opinion, fishing is a good way to kill some time. You know, that is an absolute terrifying sight. Four creepers all just spawned in right next to each other. And finally, I can just sit and relax and do a little bit of fishing while I wait for these guys to grow up. 
When it came to the actual breeding of the cows, there's about a five minute cooldown in between each breeding session. In total, this took me about an hour and a half. I would usually breed them right in the morning and then breed them right as the sun was going down. Now this gap was longer than five minutes, but it did ensure that they were all ready to go. I also realized while I'm waiting, I might as well plant my sugar cane down and let some of it grow. Luckily, I realized this about halfway through the breeding session. And that little pond off to the left side, well, that wasn't there. I decided to make that since I wanted to do fishing and I really didn't want to fish in a single one by one hole. It does give me a little bit of an idea to maybe come back here in the future and build an entire farm village. We can talk about that later though. Okay, this looks a little bit wrong, but there is so many cows here. I mean, just look how many babies there are in the middle. Besides that, I think this is plenty of cows to get enough leather for an enchantment setup, but I don't think this sword is gonna survive it. Well, I guess we'll find out. It indeed did not survive killing all those cows. So I quickly made a new one and got back to harvesting all these guys. It worked out almost perfectly. As I was killing the cows, the baby ones were growing up almost immediately. So by the time I was done, there was only pigs left in the pen. Um, holy cow. Yeah, <laughs> no pun intended. Yeah, I think this is gonna be plenty enough leather and also probably enough food for quite a long time. It's also now become a pig pen. With the cows harvested and all the sugar cane collected, I pretty much have everything I'm gonna need for this enchantment table. The only problem is I did get a lot of items on the way over here and I'm not gonna be able to take them all back because you know, inventory space in Mojang hasn't done anything about it yet. At least to help it a little bit, I'm gonna make all the books. Surprisingly, I was able to make it all fit. Well, not all of it, just the things I wanna take. And I do wanna take these, the buried treasure maps, because I think it would be cool to set up a room with all of our treasure maps in the future. Besides that though, it is time to head home and our boat should be right down down there. And then our base should be about 3,000 blocks past that. You'll never guess what I forgot. Yep, it was the bed. Luckily, I can throw these torches out. I don't totally need them. And now we can say farewell to our little tiny home. It was good while it lasted, but I got bigger and better things to do. There's our boat with our B in it. Sorry for leaving you for so long, buddy. I want to, but I can't. That makes me so sad. Oh, and of course, there's another one. Well, I do need to go to land anyway so I can sleep through the night, so I might as well just stop by. You know, might as well. So the uh, whole thing buried and I think that's the game trying to tell me something. I uh, felt like I had to and yet you know it was worth it. I got a bunch of iron from it. Well my pickaxe broke so now I'm done exploring. Like for real this time. Wait I, I need my bed. We're now close enough where I leave my friend. I'm just letting you guys know it took me like an extra 20 minutes to get home just so I can get this guy as close to base as possible. With that being said though the mountain should be right up here and we are officially back home with all of our goodies. Now I just got to put all this stuff away so I can actually do a little bit of enchanting. Before I can actually build the enchantment table, I do need to collect up a little bit of obsidian. Luckily, there's a little lava pool right down the hill. I knew this was going to come in handy. Just one more right there. I'm going to make sure there's no lava left. So now I can just do this. Using the obsidian I just gathered, I can now make an enchantment table and now I need a few logs so I can make all the bookshelves. I'll just turn that all into spruce planks. I think we need 15 bookshelves in total, but I'll just make 21. For the time being, we're just going to put this right here. And I know it's ugly, but I will move it before the end of this episode. Now we can check. Please be efficiency. Okay, please have unbreaking. Oh, that's perfect. That's like a perfect working pickaxe. Looting three. Hopefully that carries over to the diamond sword. Silk touch on a shovel. Oh, that is so good. I think I'm gonna take the looting three though, if it carries over. I'll just craft both a sword and also a shovel. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna make myself an ax. Oh my goodness. Of course it's looting two. I'm gonna go for the shovel instead. Okay, that is a perfect shovel. It's it's still looting too. And that is still silk touch. I'm just gonna go for the sword because if I just get silk touch on the axe, that doesn't really do me any good. Where at least if I have looting, it's all right. And that is a good sword. I got unbreaking three, smite four, and looting two. Now, what is the axe showing? Because I'm almost level 30. It's unbreaking three. All right, I'm sure I can find a way to get up to level 30 real quick. I'm just gonna go with the good old method of smelting cobblestone up to get a few levels. I didn't really have the patience for the cobblestone to smelt up, so I decided to go to the river and kill some squid to get up to level 30, which obviously worked. Hopefully we get something more than just unbreaking. Please have efficiency. Oh my goodness, that on my pickaxe. Well, it's what it is now. Does fortune even do anything good on an axe? I'm not sure. You guys tell me in the comments down below. I am so glad we got these enchanted tools because it's gonna make this next project go a whole lot faster. Oh wait, did I even tell you guys what the next project is? Well, I wanna build the perfect mine entrance going all the way down to the bottom of the world. And yes, this sounds a little crazy for episode two, but I think it's totally worth it. Although before I can start building this mine, I 
I need to head out and collect up a little bit of resources. First off, by making my way down the hill, I wanted to start off by collecting up a little bit of spruce logs because it's the easiest and also the closest. And having this efficiency axe makes things go a whole lot quicker. And obviously I placed the saplings back down. When are you guys gonna start trusting me? Another item I'm gonna need is a little bit of sand. So making my way down to the river's edge, I spent about a minute collecting up a stack of sand. This is gonna be used for smelting up some glass and also making a little bit of cement. And while I'm down by the water, I also needed a little bit of squid ink, so I killed a few squid. And man, these guys are fast. The next item on the list is a little bit of oak logs. So making my way over to our good friend, Mr. B in a boat, I ventured out to find a oak forest. Luckily, there was one pretty close by. Although the fate of this forest was not so lucky. Knowing that I'm gonna need oak for the future, I decided to take a pretty massive chunk out of this forest, but the trees do drop saplings. So I was able to replace them all back down, so I have a forest to come back to in the future. So I got a little bit lost on my way home, but in the process of doing so, I did find something down here. Yep, that's that's a spawner. Okay, with a few mobs in there. Let me take out this zombie first. What do we got in the chest? Oh, we got a saddle. Awesome, and a golden apple. I'm just gonna take the saddle back with me for now, and maybe the golden apple? Once I was back to base, I just had a few more chores I needed to finish up. First off, by stripping a bunch of oak logs down, along with spruce logs. I also had to turn all of my cement powder into cement, so I made a crude little setup and got it all done. With that being said, I have one more thing I need to do, which is rip out this enchantment setup. I know, such a waste of wood, but it is in the way for this mine entrance. With the enchantment table now out of the way, I quickly jumped into getting the structure built. The base of it is mainly going to be stripped spruce and oak logs, alternating back and forth to give it a little bit of texture. And then on the right side is going to be a tunnel, and on the left side is a smaller structure that's going to hold some chest. And honestly, guys, I'm really enjoying building in a cave. Something I haven't done in a very long time, but man, it is fun. It's a little crude right now, but I do like how it's looking. There's gonna be a main structure off to the right side and then a smaller little building off to the left. Now, originally I was also gonna do that smaller building in oak, but I do have a little bit of copper and I'm wondering how that will look. Now you're probably wondering, why did I need black cement? Well, by using black cement, I can create sort of an optical illusion in this tunnel. By filling in all the walls along with the ceiling, I can make it look like this tunnel goes on forever. A little bit something like that. And if I carry these rails all the way back and have them go back another block or two, and then take a step back and see what I mean, that thing looks like it goes on forever. I mean, try and tell me you know where the corner is. Now that the main mine entrance is complete, I've spent a little while working on this railway. I wanted to go through this tunnel and take me all the way to the bottom of the world, but I was running into a little bit of an issue, as you guys can tell. Every time I would go through it, I would take a little bit of damage, so I replaced this block with tinted glass, but that brought up another issue. It's fairly noticeable and kind of gives up the illusion a little bit, so for now, I'm gonna leave it, but once I get some slime balls in the future, I'll replace it with a piston. Besides that, can we just take a moment to admire how cool this building turned out? I mean, it's not even finished yet, and it looks awesome. Or at least in my opinion. You guys might think it looks horrible. I do think adding in the copper really helped alongside of adding in this tough tower. It's definitely not the most detailed part of the build, but I do think it gives it a little bit of character. Now, am I just procrastinating so I don't have to dig a tunnel to the bottom of the world? Maybe. Is that okay? I think so. Either way, it's time to get to mining. I was pretty certain there was a cave directly below the mine entrance, and I thought it would be a cool idea to try to make my way over to it and do a sky bridge through it. So I dug a 3x3 tunnel and had a U-turn about halfway down, and eventually it met up with the cave. I also decided to dig a flat tunnel that's about 20 blocks long, and in the future, this could be our mass storage for all of our items. I think it would be cool if we had a minecart system going all the way up and down the cave that could drop things off in an auto storage system. This is definitely going to be a little bit risky going straight over a cave that could be full of skeletons, let alone I'm crouching on one block. Yay me.
as much fun as I am having doing all this design work in this cave, I do just need to get to the bottom of the world. Wait, let me kill the zombie. Because if I keep messing around, I'm gonna lose all the durability on my pickaxe and I have no more diamonds left over. So that means I have to dig to the bottom with iron, which is not good. Although before I can keep digging, I do need to finish this bridge real quick because I wanna go right about there next to the skeleton because you know, I just love making my life way harder. Once I had the rest of the sky bridge going through the cave finished up, I pretty much just went for a straight shot all the way down to the bottom of the world. Digging out a one by three tunnel, which means I'm gonna bonk my head for now. I do wanna come back through later and make this a little wider and a little bit taller. And I also wanna add a stop at each one of the premium spots for mine. You know, that's like the one thing I didn't wanna dig into. I'm not hearing any shriekers. Okay, I think I'm in the clear. Once I made it down to bedrock, I decided to do a little bit of strip mining before I make the long journey back up to the surface. I first just dug out a three by three tunnel going about 40 blocks. And then I used the method I've used before, which you just dig out in every single direction. And after a little bit of strip mining, I know they're in here somewhere. There they are. I found some diamonds. So at least I'll have something to look forward to while I make the long journey back up to the surface. And trust me, it's it's really long. How many is there that we got? One, two. Oh, so there's at least six. Up, oh, it's an eight pack. Definitely an eight pack. Look at that. Okay, that's awesome. If I had fortune, it could have been a 20 pack, but no, 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 I did just an eight. Although I do have plans to get fortune in the next episode, hopefully, considering we found that zombie spawner right next to the house. Okay, time for the journey back up. And yes, I'm gonna bonk my head pretty much 90% of the way. When it comes to crafting all of the rails for this minecart system, I think I'm gonna have plenty enough iron. But when it comes to the gold, it's gonna be quite close. I mean, how many rails can I craft in total? Okay, 47. Yeah, if my math is correct, it's gonna be a really close call. I don't even think we're gonna make it. It is worth trying though. Minecart acquired and we'll start from the top, make sure we can get enough speed. Can can we do it? Yeah, yep, we can. Okay, we're down at the bottom. Now, if we go this way, are we gonna be able to make it up to the top? No, you have to go every four rails. Oh, that's such a bummer. Okay, let's give this another try. Whoa, 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 wait, wait a second. That's so weird. Okay, maybe I need to double up. Okay, game, third time's the charm. So on this one, I've done five normal rails and then two powered rails. Oh, I didn't put that there. Oh, it makes it, it makes it. Nope, okay, that doesn't work either. Okay, this is gonna be a lot more expensive than I anticipated. Fourth time's the charm, hopefully. Okay, that seems to be working. But that does mean I am not gonna have even close to enough powered rails. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Oh, please don't go all the way up. Gotta break the torch, gotta break the torch. Okay, got it. Well, I'm just gonna go down as far as I can, and then when I run out of powered rails, we'll call it good. So this is about as far as I could make it, and I'm not even down to deep slate yet. I'm almost there, because the deep slate starts right, right there. So my guess is I probably need another 20 powered rails. Anyways, I wanted to test it from this point just to make sure everything is working fine. Oh, I didn't do that. Oh, oh, never mind. Can't test it yet. Gotta put the torches in first. Okay, now it's ready for a try. If I'm right, this should get us all the way up to the top. Oh yeah, this is gonna get us up to the top. No problem. Perfect. Well, I guess I gotta do a little bit of strip mining for gold. A trick I've done in the past when I'm looking for a specific resource in the deep slate, if I find a tough vein, I'll mainly stick to digging that out since tough mines way faster than deep slate, meaning you're uncovering a lot more blocks a lot faster. About 20 minutes of mining later, I'm now up to 41 raw gold, which should be plenty enough. And it is so convenient being able to use this minecart rail right now. And I just got up to level 30 from collecting copper out of the furnaces. That was a pleasant little surprise I was not expecting. I'm gonna craft myself another diamond pickaxe. Hopefully we can get fortune on it. Uh, I'm gonna sleep real quick. Oh, wait a second. I, I don't have an enchantment set up right now. <laughs> I forgot that I had to break it. Nothing a little bit of wood can't fix. I also decided to put it in a spot that hopefully it's not in the way for the rest of the episode. Anyways, please have fortune. Okay, show an efficiency for... Four. Wait, what, what's the book showing? Sharpness three, yeah, definitely not doing that. All right, please give me some fortune, please, please, please. So fortune three, efficiency four. Even though I would have loved to have unbreaking two, I am not gonna complain about that. Well, I was able to get a total of 36 more powered rails, so hopefully that does the trick. And I'm gonna make it with excess. Let me just put a block of wood right there. We can put another powered rail right there. Make myself a button. And I think the only right thing to do is hit this button if I can find it and take this thing on its full trip up 
to the top. Uh, of course, I, I forgot a torch. Nope, and now I'm going back down. Nice. And it worked. Look at that. I expected nothing less because I was able to do it from pretty much almost the bottom. I just watched that fox climb up that ladder. I had no idea foxes could do that. What you hold in there, is that a, a piece of gravel? I don't think that's super useful, buddy. Well, him being up there leads us right into our next project. Currently, that's my enchantment setup. Yeah, I know, not very finished. So instead of leaving it right there, I'm gonna have this little space up top, which I can obviously clear out a little bit. And I think I wanna put the enchantment table up here. Now, for this bigger side, I think I'm gonna leave this open for the time being, because in the future, I'd like to put some villagers up there. So first things first, I just wanna clear out plenty enough room to work in. This should be good enough for now. Actually, it should be way, way more than enough. All I need to put in here is an enchantment table. But while I'm at it, I'm at least gonna put in a floor so I don't fall down into these gaps. And then I also want to give myself a ceiling and I think I'm going to follow the curve of this copper. So here's kind of the look that I'm going for. I'm not sure how much I love how harsh this angle is, but there isn't much I can do because I don't want to get rid of this partition wall. So for now, I'm just going to leave it, but I can start putting the enchantment table in. Now, while it's dark right here, I'm not sure, but do some of you guys remember when enchantment tables were transparent? If you put a torch underneath it, it could light things up. I don't think it can anymore. Uh, no, I guess it's still... No, 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 that's the enchantment table's light. Yeah, it used to be a pretty cool trick to do, but now you can't. Do it. I also made some chiseled bookshelves that I guess when you break, you don't get them back. A little bit of technical difficulties there. I didn't realize that was a thing, so I had to go craft more. With that being said, it's all finished up. Besides that, I am so happy with how this structure turned out. I think the style of the starter house sort of carries over to the mine, but they don't look completely identical. And also, we now have a railway going all the way to the bottom of the world. Although, with that being said, I think this is a perfect stopping point for today's episode. I hope you guys are enjoying the series, and obviously, don't forget to like and subscribe. I will see you guys next time. What is going on, friends? Welcome on back to the Let's Play series. And man, thank you guys so much for the love and support you guys have been showing me on the first two episodes. Besides that, though, I've spent episode one and two slowly transforming this cave from the barren, ugly cave it is to a beautiful, lush environment that is being created straight from my imagination. But today, I want to step out of the cave because there is a few things that I need to build that are going to take up way too much room inside of here. If we take a look over at the lake nearby, you can see that there's an island. Well, almost an island. I want to spend today's episode clearing out all the trees on this island, turning it into a massive farmland, and obviously giving it a lot of beautification. And as always, if you want to see more content like this, don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's try and get this video to 5,000 likes. I know it's a stretch, but I think it's doable. So this is the island, and it's a little bigger than I thought it was. And obviously it's an island, so I'm gonna need bridges connecting to it. Specifically two, one from the island to this piece of land, and then another one crossing the river, because our cave is up there. Oh boy, I have my work cut out for me, and it has to start raining. It's raining IRL and in game right now. All right, well, I think I'm gonna start by clearing out all the trees on the island, just so I have an idea of what I'm working with. Once I started taking down tree by tree, Tree, that's when it really sunk in how big this island actually is. Which isn't a bad thing. That means I'm gonna have plenty of farmland. It just means this project's probably gonna take twice as long as I thought it would. Although it is nice that there is a bunch of trees because I don't need to go out and do any spruce wood collecting. Because there is plenty of two by two trees on this island, so hopefully I should end up with five to six stacks of wood, if not more. You know, last episode I was wondering if the foxes hunt fish, and I'm gonna assume so because there's a bunch of dead fish in the water. This guy is going to town. Oh yeah, look at him. Look at that. Let him go. Don't mind if I collect this stuff up though. I mean, come on. It's free food. Oh, look at that. He has fish in his mouth. That is so cool. All right, back to chopping all these trees now. You know, I just realized that this isn't an island because there's some dirt connecting this piece of land with this piece of land. So if I just get rid of this, we, 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 we officially have an island. Look at that. You know, I'm going to get rid of a little bit more than just that because I do want it to be wide enough. So for the future, I can build a bridge and I can also take boats underneath it. Thank you.
That should be good enough for now. I'll come back a little bit later and beautify it. And also probably widen it out a little bit more. Besides that, all of the trees have been taken care of now. And I'm starting to put together a plan of what I want this island to look like. Up on this raised piece of land, I think is where the farmhouse is going to go. And then pretty much everywhere else is going to be farmland. I am going to collect up the sweet berries though, because I'm getting annoyed every time I get stuck in them. And also, they may not do a lot of damage to you, but man, it gives your armor a beating. Now, before I get started on actually placing in the fields on the island, I'm gonna need to build a few small ones because this is currently all the crops I have to my name, which clearly isn't enough. Oh, and by the way, this is how much wood I got from chopping all those trees down. Yeah, I know, it's a lot. So, grabbing my crops, I made my way down the mountain and found a solid piece of land to place in these tiny fields and got to building. Now, I know this may seem a little wrong considering I'm gonna be building fields on the island, but I want to build these away from that so I can actually start working on the island and not having to worry about these little tiny fields, which will eventually be destroyed anyways. Although I didn't really think about the fact that I need to be near them for the crops to grow, so I'm gonna have to crank my simulation distance way up to make sure all of this stuff is doing good. Luckily, my computer can handle it. It's definitely bigger than what I needed it to be because this is all of my crops placed in. Luckily, there's plenty of room for the future once I start harvesting these crops. I just need to remember to keep checking on them. While I wait for the crops, to grow, I do want to get started with the two bridges that need to connect these two pieces of land and those two pieces of land. One of these bridges is going to be much larger than the other, and I think I'm going to start with the bigger one just to get it over with. Luckily, last episode, we spent quite a while getting an enchantment set up, so it makes this process go a whole lot quicker when I'm having to remove a lot of blocks. Luckily, the ground does have a lot of coarse dirt because I will be using that as my path block on the island, along with my pathway connecting back up to the cave. This won't be enough for the entire project, but but it's a great start. Now that I got most of the land cleared out for now, I took a minute to set up a little template for this bridge. And I also smelted up a bunch of cobblestone into stone. Hopefully this is enough because it's really boring to watch it smelt. And I was also smart enough to bring my stone cutter with me. Come on, that deserves a like on the video. Okay, let's get to building. I decided to make my life a whole lot easier and just build this bridge straight. In the past, I normally add a little bit of a diagonal to them, but on this one, I wanted to keep it simple. Constructing it mainly of stone brick and little little splotches of cobblestone. Right now, I'm not going to put a roof over it, but in the future when I have a little bit more wool, I do want to come back and do that. I think the bridge does look really good, but adding that pop of color with wool will make it look a whole lot better. I'm also very happy with the size of it. I didn't want it to dwarf any of the other builds around it, or even the little bridge that's going to be going next to it. One of my main goals with this world is to try and keep everything proportional to one another. In the past, I've started with really small homes and then built absolutely massive structures. And looking back on it, it doesn't make much sense when you take a look at it. Really, you guys just have to show up as I'm building my bridge. Okay, I have full iron armor, so I might be able to do this. I need the guy behind to shoot the guy with the banner. Okay. Oh, there he goes. He shot him. Come on, shoot him. Come on. Okay, I'm over this. I'm over this. I'm over this. I'm just gonna take this guy out. Oh my goodness, I'm taking damage. And then I have a cool idea if I get the boat real quick and I swim by this guy. Come on, get in the boat. Okay, he's not getting in the boat. Come on, in the boat. In the boat. In the boat. Okay, got him in the boat. Perfect. Now, if I get in with him, I can just put him right in the middle of the lake and then swim away. Perfect. And now he's just trapped right out there. Oh, look, the fishes are saying hello. I wonder if he'll despawn. Oh my goodness, that's a lot of arrows. Okay, I I was saying, I wonder if he despawns if he's stuck in a boat. I feel like he shouldn't, but for some reason, I feel like that's happened to me. Let me know down in the comments if he will despawn. And if he's going to, maybe I'll get a name tag and let you guys choose a name for him. After a little bit more work, the bridge is pretty much all finished up. You better not shoot me. There's a few more small things I do want to add, maybe like some leaves, a little bit more glow lichen, and obviously, like I said, a roof. But for now, I think this works. I can hear that. No, you, no, oh, he is so lucky I won't kill him right now now. Oh, there's an arrow in the back of my head. Oh, there it is. It's in my shoulder. With that being said, I think it's time to get started on the second bridge. This one is going to be significantly smaller and also made out of wood.
I did say it was gonna be a whole lot smaller, but that doesn't mean that it can't look really good. I honestly think I like this bridge better than that one. You know, all bridges are equal. Besides that, I have not checked on the crops in quite a while, which I probably should because if they're fully grown in, that's doing me nothing. And that's not a good sign. I can't tell if they're growing or not. I mean, some of them have grown, but I feel like they should have grown more than this because it's been like 45 minutes to an hour since I placed this in. Actually, maybe even longer. Okay, I'm gonna give it another like 15 minutes and come check on it again because I am gonna be a whole lot closer because I need to go up to the cave. Oh, look at that. They're becoming friends. It would be so funny if the fox just like killed them right now, you know, because pillagers suck, but it is kind of cool to see. And we can also see both the bridges from here. Before I can get started on any more building, I need to go collect up a little bit of resources. I did have a bunch of oak, but I used it all on the mine entrance. I don't know how like six stacks of oak logs went into this, but they've disappeared. So I need more. Now, before I make my way over to the oak forest, I do want to craft some shears so I can collect up some oak leaves because I love using them for detailing. Okay, the bee in the boat now has another friend, which also means we now have two pillagers in boats. Okay, well, I guess having an extra one's okay. I do need to craft a new boat now. One boat acquired, I hear skeleton. Oh, where'd that come from? He must be in the cave. I am very interested to make my way over to the forest because I placed down like 10 times the amount of saplings as there were trees. So I'm interested to see if it's like totally overgrown or if nothing's grown in at all. I guess that answers our question. Looks like I'm gonna be taking another massive chunk out of this forest. Yeah, you guys didn't really get a good look at this last episode, but there, there's a lot of saplings. While I work on my lumberjack skills, here's a very satisfying time lapse of all the saplings growing back in. And this isn't even half of them. Hopefully this should be enough logs for that farmhouse. I did wanna collect up a good amount of birch because I do plan on using it. One other thing I do wanna grab while I'm over here is a little bit of kelp. It's kind of amazing from breaking like three kelp stems, I got over a stack and a half. Not too bad. Okay, this is this is good growth. Definitely seeing a difference here. With some resources collected, I can move on to the next step of building up this island, which is gonna be a little bit of terraforming. I need to get rid of some of these really high spots and then build up some of these lower spots. Taking a quick break from terraforming, I decided to come out to the nearby jungle to test a theory. Last episode in the comments, one of you guys told me that if I have fortune on my axe, I will get more seeds when I harvest this stuff. And I wanted to put that to the test. Yep, that's what I'm looking for right there. I just got two seeds from harvesting one tall grass. Yeah, I'm gonna spend a little while doing this so I don't have to wait as long for all my other crops to grow in. Whoever that was that left that comment, you are the absolute best. I just got eight stacks of wheat seeds like it was nothing. Sadly, I can't do that with carrots and potatoes. Well, it works, but it just doesn't grow like tall grass does. Okay, time for like a 3000 block journey home. Now, before I get to placing in all of these fields on this island, I think I wanna start with building the main structure first, just because I wanna make sure to leave enough room for it. And if I build it first, then it's not anything to worry about. I have spent a little while kind of planning out which area is gonna be which field. I think down here, is gonna be my carrots because I don't need a huge carrot field. Up here on this big plateau is gonna be my wheat field. And same with this little area over here is also gonna be wheat. In the back, I think I'm gonna do some more carrots. And then on the front right here is gonna be potatoes. And then all of this podzol, that's all gonna be sugarcane. Oh, and down here on this little area is gonna be some more potatoes. With that being said, let's get to building this house. I wasn't super happy with how this part of the structure turned out, so I decided to change some of the blocks out with brown mushroom, and then also add in some jungle planks for a little bit of texture. Although now I'm looking for some easy coal to harvest, because I really don't want to go all the way back up to the cave, and I need to make a few campfires. 
Now, why do I need campfires, you may ask? Well, obviously we gotta put a chimney on this house and I'm gonna make it out of copper. Hopefully it should give the roof a little bit more pop. And then also while I'm up here, I do wanna add in a few windows. Please don't tell me that lines up with another window. No, it does not, perfect. So by turning some stairs like that, putting myself a glass pane and then a slab, we have a little window. And you know, I'm gonna do another one right here. Yeah, I like this spot. I'm also gonna do a few along the back. And for this one, I think I'm gonna do it up by the slabs, yeah. And then instead of using a slab on top of the pane, I'm gonna use a trap door for this one. And actually, I think I'm gonna switch them all out to trap doors. Now let's make our way back down to the ground and check out how this looks. I've been using a boat to take a step back because there isn't much land to see from. Okay, yeah, I like how that's looking. I feel like maybe it could use a little bit more mushroom blocks, but I don't really know where to add them in. Besides the roof, I also think it would be pretty cool if we put a water mill right here. And I'm gonna need to build up a little standing platform. Can do something a little bit like that. Ooh, I do want it to preferably go in the water. So I'm gonna need to make it just a bit bigger. That should do the trick. So let's just get rid of all of this dirt. And you know, I think I'm actually gonna make this a double wide. A little bit something like this. And then using my fence post, I can now come back through and fill it in a little bit. And just like that, we have a finished water wheel, which just adds a little bit more detail to this build. I also need to put windows right there. Just a little something like that. And now it's time to just go around and do a little bit of final detailing. Having rooted dirt in the game is probably one of my favorite things they've introduced. It makes it so nice when you're using coarse dirt because you have something to texture it with. And obviously you don't wanna use too much cause you can't come by the stuff super easily. Besides that, I wanna take a break from building this thing and go check out our crops. Hopefully they've grown in a little more from last time I checked in a little bit. And I am doing what you guys told me, which is to use my fortune ax to harvest all this stuff. I don't, I don't think that's fully grown in yet. Let's check. Nope, definitely wasn't. Now I could sit here in AFK and wait for all the stuff to grow in, but that means I need to stay relatively close by. So instead, I'm just gonna harvest it all up. Yep, that's a lot of wasted time, but whatever. And I'm just gonna start planting in part of the fields over on the island. And for the seeds, well, that doesn't really matter because I have so many of them now. I'm just gonna start with setting up a very temporary field right here, just so I can get started with these crops growing in. Eventually, this is solely just gonna become one of my carrot fields, but for now, I'm gonna place the potatoes in too. And while I wait for these crops to grow up, I'm gonna get started started on the wheat field. Although first, I kind of have a cool idea to do a little bridge right here with the pathway going underneath it. A little bit something like that. And this side's just gonna be an extended part of the wheat field. Anytime I build a field, I always go for the exact same look, mainly because I like it a lot. Obviously it starts with placing the field in itself and then I like to go around the edges and put some leaves. And for the other side of that small bridge, I think I might actually put a windmill there instead of more wheat fields. Of course I get to building and I run out of oak leaves and the oak forest happens to be like really far away. Okay, quick trip and I've arrived. Don't mind if I take your guys' wool. Don't worry, you'll grow back, okay? walk away from me. I'm hoping that there's some beehives over here that I can grab because if you place them near your crops, it supposedly makes them grow quicker. And I do have a silk touch shovel, so I should be able to harvest it. Okay, time to collect some leaves. Oh my goodness, finally I found at least a bee. I've been looking for a hive for like 15 minutes now and I have not come across a single one. Okay, let's see if we can find this guy's home. He's going this way. Oh, there it is, beehive right there. Now, of course I didn't bring a campfire. No, definitely didn't. So I'm gonna need to smelt up some charcoal so I can make one. One crafting table and then one furnace. So I can put that in there with that and all of that theirs. Can I make two campfires? Oh, I can make two. Okay, hopefully we can find another beehive because I'll put that there and then if I can find another I can come back when the sun's setting because that means all the bees will be within the hives you know actually I think I just watched all three of them go into here so I'm just gonna break that and then also use my silk touch on the campfire so I don't have to recraft it was there another bee up in there did I did I just see another bee oh yep there is right there yep there's another hive is there any more in the surrounding area I ended up collecting three beehives in total that each have two bees in them and obviously plenty of oak leaves and birch leaves so now I'm gonna make the long journey back home. Now that we're back home, it is time to go full steam ahead to get this project finished up because it's roughly taken me 20 days so far, which is way too many. So while the crops finish growing in so I can replant 
system, I'm gonna get started on this windmill that's going right about here. In my honest opinion, I think building windmills is one of the hardest things to do in Minecraft. Mainly building the blades, it is so hard to be creative with it and make it look good. Besides that, I knew I wanted the main structure to look pretty similar to the house off to the right side, so I used the exact same block palette. Except instead of using stone brick on the base, I decided to use cobblestone and tough. I think this is gonna add a little bit more variety to the buildings, and I have a bunch of it, so why not use it? Once I had the main building complete, I took a step back and realized it was a little too tall. It was looking unproportional, so I decided to bring it all down one block and lower the roof. From there, it was time to start on the blades. Luckily for me, there's a space age thing called Google, so I went on Google and looked up some blades. I think the one I ended up picking is perfect. It doesn't involve using any wool, while instead it uses birch. This took me a good 20 minutes just to get this thing built. I don't think there's any good way to do it besides just scaffolding with dirt. I guess if you use scaffolding, it might be better. Well and started to expand it over to here. Hopefully once all this stuff's fully grown in, I'll have enough to place in every single one of the fields, but it's it's still growing. So in the meantime, I wanna make a little walkway coming over to this one because right now it looks a little bit unfinished. That is one field complete, so it's on to the next one. Except this one's gonna be a little bit more work because I have some terraforming to do, as you can see. With the potatoes now finished up, I'm gonna get started on this sugarcane field, which is pretty much just gonna be this entire area running along the water. When it comes to sugarcane placement, there's a very specific pattern in order to fill up every single block with a piece of sugarcane. It's much easier to do when you're on a perfectly flat piece of land with no other water sources around it. For me, I'm up against the river, so it's a little difficult. Once I had all the sugarcane placed in, I decided to do a little bit of pathway work along with building a stairwell going up to the wheat field and the top of the house. Now, when it comes to this location right here, I was gonna put Put in an extended wheat farm, but instead I think I might do a little apiary, since earlier we did collect up these three beehives. But before I can do so, I'm gonna need to smelt up a little bit of glass, and also sleep. And a few minutes later, I have some white glass, and also a little bit of bone meal so I can place it in and do some more detailing. And all the bone meal's gone just like that. I really need to find a better solution. Anyways, let's get started on the apiary. I think that there's a but for now, I am pretty happy with how it's turned out. In the future, I do want to do like a fully automated bee farm below this. And honestly, I have some really big plans besides that for this island. There's a lot of room underneath this that I can mine out. And I think it'd be cool if we did like a full blown seed vault and had all of our automatic farms hidden below this island. Oh yeah, besides that, I also got the crops placed in on this backfield and I got some more bone meal. So I was able to use that. Although I am completely out of time for today's episode. So anything else we're going to have to work on in the next one. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next time. What is going on, friends? Welcome on back to the Let's Play world. And man, thank you guys so much for all the love and support you guys have been showing me on this series. I am really enjoying taking a break from hardcore. Although I didn't die in the hardcore world, so expect an episode from there pretty soon. Besides that, if you're just joining, last episode we built up this completely custom island, which is full of farmland and an awesome looking windmill. Windmill, I'm sorry, I know I always say windmill. Besides that, there is a little bit more work that needs to be done to this island, but we're gonna do that a little bit later today because I wanna head back up to the lush cave. Currently, the storage situation is getting a little bit out of hand. Everything's just getting really disorganized. And the longer I hold off on organizing all of that stuff, the worse it's gonna get. Meaning I'm just never gonna wanna organize it ever. So today I wanna continue expanding this lush cave a little bit and making my way over to this area. I think this location right here is gonna be the perfect spot for a storage room. And also a pretty big one too. Besides that, there's also this little spaghetti cave. And if I go all the way up it, it makes its way to the surface. Yep, all the way to the top. 
I think it would be really cool to transform this cave into a pathway coming up to the surface here. And maybe in the future, we can build some stuff up here. This cave is gonna need a lot of work though, because currently it's really, really, really small. And also it's pretty long too. But before we can get started building, I'm gonna need to clear out a little bit of area because this, this right here isn't gonna work, nor is this. Well, this part of the cave isn't too bad. It's mainly just up there where it gets really small. And also we have another part of the cave. I'm not quite sure what I want to do with it, so you guys let me know in the comments down below. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. It means the world to me. Jumping straight into the demo phase, I started off by clearing out most of the blocks where the storage room is going to go, mainly because I want to give myself a good idea of how big I can actually build this thing. I don't need it to have hundreds of chests, but I do want it to be able to last me a pretty long time. Luckily, if I do need to expand it in the future, I do have a few more blocks behind me that I can always dig out. But for now, this should be a plenty big enough space. Once I had the main storage room dug out, I got started on the cave. I decided to start up at the top just because it was going to need a little bit more work. So slowly making my way down this, I widened it out piece by piece. And there is definitely going to need to be a lot of detail work done. And I'm super glad I started with digging all this out because I'm going to need to smelt all this cobblestone into stone so then I can come through and smoothen out some of the harsher curves with some stone stairs and stone slabs. With the top half of the cave complete, I made my way down to the second half of it. This didn't involve much work because it was already pretty wide. Although it did take quite a beating on my pickaxe. Oh, I see you up there. Let's see if I can get him to drop down. Up oh, there he goes. Yep, yep. There we go. With my looting sword, give me some bones. I want bone meal. I have a strange addiction to bone meal, if you couldn't tell. Now, while I wait for all my stone to smelt up, I want to go on a little bit of an adventure. And sort of a dangerous one, too. Because I need some, some obviously, bone meal. And I haven't found a skeleton spawner yet, so I think the next best option is to go to the nether. And you may be wondering, what's in the nether? Well, if I can find myself a soul sand valley, there is tons of fossils, which are made out of bone blocks. And each one of those bone blocks gives you nine bone meal. Pretty much the only thing I'm gonna need is obsidian. Oh, there's a tree there. And luckily, there's a lava pool right down here that we found back in episode one. Yep, right here. I am so excited to mine 10 pieces of obsidian. Can't you tell? Okay, that really wasn't that bad. I kind of forgot how fast you can mine that stuff when you have efficiency four. Anyways, time to sleep. Now, when it comes to where I should put this portal, I think I actually want to put it in this cave. For now, it's going to be a little bit ugly. And I actually, you know, this is a perfect spot right here. As I was saying, for now, it's not going to be the prettiest thing in the world, but I'll come back through and make it look a little better later. I did not just do that. I did not mean to do that. We all know three by three portals are better than the normal one. Do we have a flint steel? Yeah, I do. If I were to say I wasn't terrified right now, that would be a complete lie. I mean, this isn't hardcore, so it's not too bad, but it, it's still a little terrifying. Please spawn me in a soul sand valley, please. No basalt delta, no basalt delta. Okay, that is not horrible. Oh, I'm, whoa, 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 that's not cool. I realized I forgot something. I need gold boots. And time for take two. First things first, while I'm in here, I definitely gotta get this sorted out. Let me just put a block right there and also take a photo of the coordinates real quick. And also, since it's right here and so easy to collect, I might as well grab all this glowstone along with the quartz. I kind of forgot how much experience quartz gives you. I mean, oh, oh whoa, 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 I don't like that. I did bring a bone arrow, luckily. Let me take this guy out. Ooh, I blocked it, that was cool. One more shot, One, oh, I missed that. Come on, come on, right there, got him. I'm not gonna worry about looking for that ghast here. As I was saying, yeah, I forgot how much experience this stuff gives you. I mean, I'm already up to level 32. Ooh, don't mind trying to kill some magma cubes. Maybe I can get some cream. I'm so glad I have looting on this sword. I already got four magma cream. Okay, now it's time to continue searching for a soul sand valley. Is, is that what I think it is? I think that is a soul sand valley way over there. I was just about to run the other way because it all looked like basalt delta. Okay, I need to go down first. First and make my way back up. Oh yeah, that's definitely a soul sand valley. And that's also a ghast. And that is exactly what we're looking for. I'm also gonna collect up a little bit of soul sand too, just so I don't forget. How did he see me from this far away? I don't even know if my bow can shoot that far. Let's try this shot. Does that, nope, that's way off. How about, oh, he's going behind that. Okay, okay, I'm just gonna drop down here now. Hopefully I'm hidden from him. Oh, there's one right there. Please give me up, did he give me a ghast here? No way you can see me from here, no way. I'm just gonna peacefully collect this stuff up. Oh my goodness, I didn't even realize that. That's a bastion right there, I think. Yeah, that's definitely a bastion. 
Okay, that that's scary looking. I gotta watch out for the guys who dress in black because they're the dangerous ones and that's also dangerous. I don't know how much of this I really want to explore. Honestly, I think I might just have to come back to this a little later because I don't feel quite prepared. Maybe once I have some diamond armor and maybe a little bit better of a sword, we can explore it. You do not shoot at me. Oh, I missed. Besides that, I do now have over a stack of bone blocks, tons of quartz, and some soul sand, so I think I'm ready to get on out of here. And I'm back at the portal, so let's head back home. I was able to kill a few gas with my sword, so I ended up getting six gas tiers, which is really cool because when it comes to killing the ender dragon, those regen potions are going to be great. Besides that, as you guys can see, I'm now up to level 34, which means I can do a little bit of enchanting, although I only have six diamonds to my name. So I can either choose to make a piece of armor or try enchanting another shovel, pickaxe, or sword. And you know, I can also try doing a bow. Considering one of my pickaxes is almost broken, I think I'm going to use three diamonds to make a new one and it's showing efficiency four. So let's go for it. And that is another great pickaxe. That is literally a mirror image of this one. And the book is showing sweeping edge, which I am definitely going to do. Well, that is a really good book. Although I don't have an anvil yet, so I'll have to craft one real quick so I can put that book on my sword. Why do anvils have to be so expensive? I mean, three iron. Wait, did I? I did that wrong. Oh, it's like that. It's like that. Okay, I get it now. I'll just put that right there. And that is going to cost me eight levels, but I am going to go for it. And that sword is insane. I'd really love to get that looting two up to looting three, though. I think that would be awesome. Oh, yeah. And by the way, I saw someone say in the comments that I killed the pillager. Well, I didn't. The one I killed was a different one. Come on. I would never kill that guy with the fox. He's my friend. Besides that, I do want to harvest up some of the crops because they're not really doing me any good when they're just fully grown. Luckily, you guys told me use my fortune axe when harvesting it because I will get more crops from it. And this is always so satisfying. And this part isn't so satisfying. It's really boring. Not only did I come down here to harvest the crops, but I also have a bunch of building blocks that are scattered in all of these chests. So I had to grab all of that. I told you that I really needed a storage room because those aren't the only chests that are like that. Now that I have a ton of building blocks together, I kind of have to decide on what I want to start first, the storage room or the pathway going through the cave. I think I'm going to start on the storage room just because I know I'm going to have to craft a lot of random blocks when it comes to building the pathway. And I rather have a storage room when I do that. For starters, I wanted the main structure to have an arch to it. I really want to carry on this look of it looking like a dwarven cave. And for some reason, I think arches make it look like that. I decided to use spruce for the main part of it and then fill in some of the gaps with bricks. I think brick is going to be the perfect color to offset all of the brown that's going to be in this build. I wanted this building to mainly be spruce because I think it gives it a little bit of a mine look. So using spruce slabs and spruce logs for the ceiling, I filled it in. And also right in the middle, I decided to do glowstone to help give this place plenty of lighting. And obviously covering up the glowstone with trapdoors because I think glowstone is kind of an ugly block. I would love to be able to use sea lanterns in this build because the blue would look really nice up against the brick and the brown spruce logs, but I currently don't have a good way to get those. Besides that, I also wanted to split the chest up in three by three groups. So each one of these little sections is going to have nine double chests. And once both sides are filled in, we're going to have a total of 72 double chests, which is probably more than I'm ever going to need. Also, when it came to the floor, I wanted to use a combination of rooted dirt and coarse dirt. By using both of these blocks, you can add a nice texture to it. And also, I think it's a great tone of brown that kind of fits up against the spruce. I really thought I had enough spruce wood to craft all these chests, but I guess I don't. Now, I could use some of the oak or dark oak that I have, or even birch, but I'm choosing not to because it's so much more difficult to collect up than spruce wood. So time to make a quick trip and collect up a few of these trees. Hopefully just over a stack and a half of logs should be plenty enough. Oh my goodness, that is so satisfying. I crafted the perfect amount of chests that I needed. And also, I think I'm gonna have plenty of storage for quite a long time. Next comes the hard part. I need to figure out a way to sort this whole place out and have it make sense, which is always very difficult to do. I think for now, I'm just gonna do signs and I can kind of name what's in each chest below it. Now, there is a few of these rows that are all gonna be one type of block because something like dirt, you're always gonna have a lot of, or at least most of the time. So like this will be dirt, this will be stone, this will 
probably be deep slate and then I'll be able to split all the woods up into a three by three area and kind of work from there. That's gonna be something I do in between episodes though because I don't think you guys really want to watch that. Besides that there is a little bit more work to be done outside because right now it's looking a little bit plain and I think the perfect solution to that problem, oh, I, I got stuck there, is gonna be adding in some moss. I probably should have done this before I placed the coarse dirt in because some of it is gonna change into moss blocks. Luckily we have um lots lots of bone meal which I love so I can just do something a little bit like this and kind of have it meander its way over. Do need to steal one of these though so I can also put it on this side. That is exactly what I mean. Already that's helping a lot and then I think I want to take one of these pillars and turn it into an amethyst pillar. We got to stick with the mystical vibe. Before I do so I also want to get started on this pathway so by stealing a few more pieces of moss I can come through and start bone mealing its way down this entire cave. For now, I'm just gonna do all of it and then I can come back through a little later with the coarse dirt and rooted dirt just to add that pathway in. This is a little too chaotic for my liking, so I'm also gonna get rid of all this tall grass and all of these saplings. Did you know when you bone meal moss next to cobblestone, it won't turn the cobblestone into moss? I had no idea that was a thing, but it, I'm glad I know it now. Um, where where did you come from? Oh, wow, I did not know this was one hit. Oh, he must have fallen and that's what made it one hit. Next up for this cave, I wanna get started on the actual coarse dirt pathway. And so first off, I'm just gonna get rid of a one block wide area, a little bit something like that. And then I can fill it in with coarse dirt just to give myself a little bit of an outline. And I'm gonna do this all the way up to the top. A little bit something like that. Now that I have the outline complete, I can now come through and widen this thing out just a little bit. I don't want the pathway to be super wide, but I do want it to look proportional to the size of the cave. And I do plan on riding horses up and down through here, so it can't be too small. I was originally planning on texturing it with coarse dirt and rooted dirt, but I think I might just leave the coarse dirt for now. If I add the rooted dirt in, it might look like a little bit too much is going on, especially once I start adding the glow lichen on the walls and also all the amethyst. And then using because I really don't want to have to hold spacebar and do this the entire way. Taking a quick break from building up that cave, I just wanted to show you guys how pretty this view is. This might be one of my favorite parts about building in this cave, is that every day you get to see the sunset right here. Yes, I'm really praising the sunset in a video game, but tell me that doesn't look awesome. Besides that, it's time to sleep. Now that we have the coarse dirt in and also the moss, the cave is starting to look a whole lot better. Although there is a few things that still need to be done, like the lighting still isn't great in here. I've hidden a few torches underneath some of the moss carpet, but obviously not enough. So using a bunch of my iron, I'm I'm gonna craft uh, 34 lanterns and also a ton of spruce fences so I can sort of place these through the cave and give it a little bit more light because I really prefer not to have any torches at all. Um, you're, you're, you're not supposed to be here. What are you doing here, bud? All right, I'm just gonna let him wander the cave. If I had a name tag, I would put him on him and put him in a boat, but I don't have any of those yet. Anyways, that should be plenty of enough lanterns. So now I just need to start working on detailing the walls. First off by adding in some glow like it, which I really don't have any of. So I'm gonna put that on the wall and start bone mealing it. Hopefully that should be enough, so I'm just gonna harvest all of this. And now I can just kind of go through and scatter this on the walls. And also on the ceiling, which is really nice because it's always hard to detail ceilings. Another cool little trick I can do is using some rooted dirt and bone mealing underneath it to give us some roots. And if I do this all throughout the cave, it's gonna add a bunch of detail. The only problem is that's kind of a harsh transition. Already the cave is looking much, much better, but I think it could use a little bit of amethyst clumps. I'm not sure how much I have, so we might have to go down to the geode and harvest some up. Actually, I think 25 should do the trick and I also have 19 purple stained glass, which I can kind of mix in with it. Thank you. 
Okay, this is looking so cool right now. Adding that pop of color with the amethyst brightens this place up so much. I feel like there's a few more things we can do to this cave, but for now, I'm gonna wait on it. Mainly because I am all out of time for today's episode. And yes, I know it's a very, very short one, but I'm currently moving out of my old apartment into my new place right now. And for those of you guys who have moved before, I'm sure you know how hard it is to do that. Currently, I'm in my brand new studio that I'm putting a bunch of sound detonating paneling in. It's still a little echoey, I'm sure you guys can tell, but it's not too terrible. There's more work to be done. I promise this is only a one-time thing. I'm almost done with all this studio stuff. And once I do have it complete, oh my goodness, the audio is gonna be insane. Besides that, thank you guys so much for tuning into today's episode and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.